Dear friends, good morning. My name is Alexander Stelarov. And today I want to talk to you about gratitude. A brief story of how we digitalized the gratitude of our clients towards our delivery guys. This is the story of tips. But first, let me begin with my personal gratitude and thank our delivery guys and girls on behalf of our company. Your work is hard and complicated. You are the final point of Dodo's client's customer journey. Your delivery sets the tone for the rest of the client's day. Thank you for being with us in these hard times. Thank you for delivering as I speak. 2020 was a hard year. Partners were losing income. The work became more complicated due to new standards and obvious risks in daily work, while so many other companies entered the delivery market. So competition became even more harsh. It was hard to retain couriers, while the customers staying in the close confinement of their home, were always ready to thank the delivery guys who came as saviors to their homes. So it was always important to find the compromise between delivery costs while being competitive. And assuming that the rates do not vary a lot in the market, it's just important then to win with some other advantages. For example, the opportunity for tipping, tips for couriers. There's another important point about tips, another advantage, that motivates the couriers to deliver better and faster, because, of course, the couriers understand that the clients will express their gratitude. So how did we begin? We decided to test whether the clients need the opportunity to tip at all. So we tested 12 couriers in Moscow. We actually made, we printed a leaflets for them. So for a week, a delivery guy added this leaflet with a QR code to every order and via cloud tip service, the clients could tip. So what did we get? We earned about 10,000 rubles during the period of one week. That is about 800 rubles per client, which is pretty good. But there is a big but. It took us almost the same amount of money, 10,000 rubles, to print those leaflets with the QR code. Of course, we had extras, but still. However, the test was generally successful. Every 14th delivery was tipped. But we did realize that if the conversion falls down, we will be losing money. That's why we decided to move to digital tipping. And going a little bit ahead of myself, let's play some audience participation. We have actually already implemented digital tips. So what do you think? What was the maximum tip for the order that the client earned? since we implemented the tips. I'll tell you later, though. So, we rushed into development. We realized that we need to cut cost by developing digital tips, but we needed certain conditions to integrate that. First of all, we needed to sync two teams, client services and couriers app. In February, we've been anticipating for the moment when we were able to put together the CyberPaws team. They have finalized the loyalty program and they were ready to join in, while Drive was actually deploying for Russia the courier app team. So they needed to find certain motivation to actually make the couriers move to the new couriers app and digital tips could be that particular inviting point. So we decided to break down the entire process of interaction between the courier and the client. Let's look at the flow. Here's a simple scheme. The client makes an order. The order gets to the pizza place. It's being cooked and the client can see the status of the order. Next, the ready-made order is being picked up by the courier and the order is being delivered to the end client. While the client can see that the delivery will be in a certain amount of minutes. We can show that easily. The order is being delivered, the client is happy and after that, the courier returns to the pizza place and actually presses the button that the courier is in line and that's the point when 
The client gets the status in the app that the order has been delivered. That's curious. And since the point when the order has been created, uh, the client can actually evaluate order at any point. And we also remind it to the client uh, that it is possible to evaluate order. So there are two obvious questions. Why? Why do we ask for the evaluation so early or so late? And when is the perfect point to request for evaluation? While answering those questions, we've decided to eliminate the problems that were standing in a way. We looked at the page of the active order and we actually removed the evaluation option at the earliest point of the order. And we also realized that we do not need the video broadcast at the later part of the order because the order has been already cooked. So we decided that it's better to add, for example, there a module with a map to see the client move. We shall add that a bit later. As for client services, at the order evaluation page we added the option to actually select the amount of tips. But while selecting uh, the uh, tip amount, the client is actually being transferred to the payment page to choose a card or Apple Pay. Why is it so complicated? We could replicate Yandex, for example, and withdraw the tips from the same card that was used to pay for the order. But here we need to actually make a compromise, probably with our goodwill and integrity. We wanted to deliver the solution as fast as possible. That's why we implemented it this way. It was the fastest. We wanted to actually deliver this function as quickly as possible to our couriers. This is working via the Cloud Tip service. We did it specifically to save some time. Overall, the solution works pretty well, even though the client's experience could be a little bit better. And also, there's an option to tip on our website. And there was no status uh, on the website whatsoever, but now it's even possible to leave tips. And in the Couriers app, we made the additional section. The Drive team helped us so that the couriers could get quick access to their personal account and dashboard. Check the balance, tie a bank card to the account and then withdraw money. The main advantage of Cloud Tips is that even though the client has not been registered, the earned tips are still there. So when the courier finally gets to register, the balance is there and it is possible to withdraw the earned tips. Of course, registration might seem quite complicated, so we created a simple instruction to help the guys to find their ins and outs. Sometimes uh, couriers move from one delivery service to the other and they need to reconnect themselves to the Dodo Pizza. And the major modification that I'm specifically proud of. When the courier checks in the app that the order has been delivered, we can actually check this moment and send push notification to the client with a request to evaluate order. So that is a perfect moment to actually evaluate order and tip. This is the uh, new feature that we're now deploying in the latest version of the app in Russia. So let us look at the client's flow. Same thing. The order has been made, it's being cooked, the client can see the order, the courier picks up the order and delivers it to the client. Then, when the order has been delivered, the courier checks in the app that the delivery has been made, and then the client gets the push notification with a request to evaluate the order. That is a perfect moment. The client has probably taken the order opened the pizza box, felt the aroma, the client sees that pizza is fine and the client is ready to evaluate order and tip. While the, the courier returns and there is no connection to client's um, further behavior whatsoever. Well, of course, we have faced a few failures. It wouldn't be so perfect. Let me make a side note here. There was a significant delay between testing and development, about nine months. While we faced a few difficulties to integrate cloud tips, it took us over two weeks to develop that particular feature, so we couldn't deliver it very quickly. But we really, really, really wanted to give tips to our courier right away. That's why we made it 
with a quick start. We only notified couriers without uh, actually making a publication in the knowledge base. So we had to make a few conclusions. A year ago I was talking about rise and other things right in front of you, but sometimes you have to be flexible. You have to be humane and see the problem right away and just quickly deliver the solution, the feature. While testing those features that we integrate, we need to be testing them in advance in order to avoid certain problems. And of course, we need to share the things that we deploy. And now let's go to the most pleasurable point, the results. 725,000 rubles of tips earned in Russia. In about a month, by the way. And every 200th order is being tipped. Every 200th delivery is being tipped. And of course, this figure will improve. Why? Because initially we were just deploying the feature. In the meantime, on May 17th, we were integrating it in the couriers app. The more clients see that that, that is possible to tip, the more couriers are pressing the button that the order has been delivered so that push notification will go to the client, the better the conversion will be. So everything is in our hands. We need to be effective in our deployment. And remember, we had some audience participation, the largest tip. There were comments, but I'm pretty certain that somebody hit the target. There are correct answers, there are correct answers, I've seen them. Too late, too late. Many guys, by the way, reacted to this audience participation. Yes, different sums are mentioned, but let's uh, be a bit more down to earth. It's not fabulous, but uh, the max tip is 3,000 rubles and about 7,000 couriers registered for the tips. Overall, the tip is on average 180 rubles. Of course, that's quite humble, but we are at the start of the project. We're quite humble and we believe it is possible to manage the amount of tips that the we can actually improve the amount of tips that the couriers get. Not to mention the fact that there was a client who could get 3,000 rubles in addition to standard delivery. So what's next? We want to make two important things. First, we want to give to our managing partners the opportunities to see how much the couriers earn in tips. We make this to actually help the managing partners understand which couriers are the best, so the delivery guys thank them. Which couriers deliver faster, better? Which couriers say the right things at the delivery? And on the other hand, uh, which couriers might need help to make the work better? I also mentioned conversion. Not everybody has push notifications on. So it's important to bring the clients back to the active delivery. That's why we need to add widget on the main page for evaluation and tipping. And far into the future, we are planning to again change this fixed amount of tips. We wanted to again deploy the solution as quickly as possible. That's why the amount of tips is fixed. But this sum can be dynamic depending on the overall order amount or depending on the region, because obviously in Moscow, for example, people are ready to tip more and we need to experiment with that as well. In addition, another big update that we're going to deploy is, of course, international deployment. We could do it differently, for example, we can make a one-time integration or, for example, use Arbaka Money, where we could quickly add new solutions without particular difficulties, like with cloud tips. As a matter of fact, we are really looking forward to it. And all of this monologue, all of this presentation is meant for only one reason. We design tips for people, not for processes, but for couriers and clients. If managing partners are seeing me right now, my dearest, when you see tipping information in the reports, please consider that as personal achievement of every particular client. The client are doing as well as they can. And dear clients, let's maintain this circle of gratitude. And one simple task for you, so that you understand how effective gratitude can be. 
during a day try to thank every single person around you and thank yourselves and see how the world around you changes. I think you'll be able to make a conclusion about how cool it can be when gratitude just circulates around doing good for people. Now let's travel to Nigeria and see how our pizza places live there. Welcome to Nigeria and today we are at Dodo 3, that is Dodo Victoria Island. Dodo Victoria Island is the third Dodo store in Nigeria and fun fact, it is actually a container. So let's go in and see what's in it. Sometimes it's difficult to find something that's of good quality, something that is rich, something that's premium, and then it's still affordable. But here at Blue Pizza, we're able to match all of our magic together. So that's why it's really good for us. Dodo 4. Dodo 4 is at Neki, Lagos, Nigeria. It's the fourth Dodo store in Nigeria. So let's go in and see what's I prefer Dodo Pizza because of the quality. And uh, it, is, it is handmade, like, different from the other pizza. I love the fact that we have to create amazing meals. I love the fact that we need to service customers, make sure they're fine, make sure they're comfortable. I love the uniqueness of our pizza and the fact that people love our brand, so that's a good thing. What's Dodo for you? For me, Dodo is fun, Dodo is creativity, Dodo is quality. Dodo is a quality. The location has been open for a while, I saw the location get developed. And I really like it. I think I'm actually yeah. buying this for my son, and he's a great fan yeah. of Margarita pizza. So just plain, basic cheese pizza. I like the pizza in general because it's affordable. Because they always come with like different packages and like it's good prices as well. You're able to make customers happy, give them what they want, and make them come back for more. Yaba is the second dodo store in Nigeria. Let's go in and see what's in it. My favorite pizza is primarily and I love dodo pizza because they have maintained quality and standard and the pizzas are really tasty. I love the chicken wings. You know. Indeed, the guys have been able to come up with a really cool thing. And let me tell you about what we've been able to come up with. Hi, my name is Losha Trandovsky and I'm developing this new format of uh, pizza restaurant at Dodo. I'll be telling you how our team participates in the 333 plan, telling you about one of our projects, Pizza Bar, what it is, what we've been able to come up with. You know about the development plan of the company for the upcoming three years, and our team is very tightly integrated in the implementation of the plan. One of the major tasks of Dodo Pizza Eurasia is to increase market share. So as a team, we must find, we must be looking for available niches, developing efficient formats for those niches and then scale them up. We have four priority projects for the upcoming years, four niches that we've been able to discover. Pizza bar, the small-scale pizza restaurants, 
flagship pizza places in the centers of large cities, food courts and small towns up to 50,000 of population. In the upcoming three years, we're going to open 300 additional pizza restaurants with the new formats. So pizza bar, a small scale pizza restaurant. What is this? Before developing the format, to develop a truly successful smaller format to scale it up, we actually assigned jobs to be done for this format. During a crisis, when investment activities go down, we needed to create a format with lower opening costs. Second point, we needed to develop the format that, that will be convenient for delivery, that will actually ensure faster delivery. And another important point for our partners is, of course, faster return on investment. And point four is increased brand awareness of Dodo. So here's the plan. We defined key indicators. First of all, the overall area of the pizza restaurant should be not more than 60 square meters. While the kitchen has to be super efficient and together with the checkout area, it should occupy no more than 40 meters. The entire opening cost should be less than 12 million rubles and the return on investment time should be less than three years. Let me tell you about how awesome that actually is, comparing to current indicators. At the moment, the smallest restaurant we had is 120 square meters, so we actually cut it by two. The average opening cost at the moment is 16 million rubles. We decreased that to 12 million rubles, that is by 25 percent. And at the moment, current return on investment time for a pizza restaurant is five years. So, thanks to the pizza bar, we are cutting that by 40 percent. We're making it 40 percent faster, so our partners and investors could faster reinvest into opening of new restaurants and projects. So, in order to implement all of this, we need a lot of cross-functionality, and it took us one year. We have invented the concept, built the restaurant, and changed everything that was wrong. The focus restaurant was Moscow, O2 at Nahimovsky Avenue 57. It's now being reconstructed in July. You shall be able to visit the restaurant and see how it's arranged there. So, let me tell you how we've been able to achieve the indicators that I've mentioned. Kitchen, one of the major things in the project. How have we been able to make kitchen so small? First, we're using pre-washed vegetables, which actually facilitates operations. We do not need vegetable washer anymore. We cut costs. Next point, frequent supplies. In pizza bars, the supplies are happening four times per week, so we can cut on actual storage space. Third point, we decided to remove washrooms for the team, but instead we gave them a more comfortable common room for rest. That, on the one hand, allowed us to cut some costs and, on the other hand, actually provide better convenience for our team. Point four, we actually installed the dishwasher that cuts space and improves operations. In addition to that, we have redeveloped the entire storage planogram. So, current kitchen is able to make 6 million rubles a month. The restaurant, the floor, we had a very important task at hand. The space is very compact, about 20 square meters for the hole, for the floor. But it was very important for us not to be Domino's, not to be a takeaway pizza restaurant. We wanted to be a restaurant for people, though small. So how have we been able to do it? First, we developed new, two new design concepts, absolutely new. We implemented those into pizza restaurants and, thanks to the use of really good materials, thanks to good furnishing, good furniture and interior design, we've been able to create 
very good client's experience. We see that people stay in the restaurant, they spend the time, they come with children, they come with strollers, they spend the time in the restaurant, and I believe it's the victory. So, people spend over 45 minutes sitting in the space of 20 square meters. That is good. Also, we got some very good client experience thanks to a combined seating. We have comfortable bar-like seating, so that provides decent client's experience and actually increases uh, the turnover and conversion in the pizza restaurant. In addition to that, we worked on communication within the restaurant. We added new neon lighting, which actually makes a positive impact on the experience as well. In addition, as for the turnaround, as for the turnover and the costs, first, of course, the costs decrease naturally because the restaurant is smaller and we just need to furnish a much smaller area. Next, the new design concept was not only meant to give a fresh client's experience, also the objective was to cut costs. We actually cut the costs of furnishing of the floor by 30%. In addition, we removed a few TV screens, which we normally use for TV menu. If normally in a pizza restaurant we use six of them, in the pizza bar we can actually use only four. In addition to that, our coffee machine is quite... is relatively cheaper. So, we still get really good coffee, but the model of the coffee machine is a bit cheaper. So, let's speak about the results in Moscow O2. The record sales was 255,000 rubles per month in May. Overall, the sales by May is 4.5 million rubles, EBITDA is over 11%, although the pizza is only 5 months old and the expected return on investment period is 36 months. This sounds smashing. We're sure that by December the pizza will earn 5 million rubles and for 60 square meters, that is a victory, by all means. So, summing up, in the upcoming three years we're going to open 100 pizza bars in order to stimulate this new format. We're actually offering benefits to our partners to build additional restaurants. And in addition to that, for one year we are removing royalties on uh, the turnover of the restaurant and pickups. So, we're looking forward to your applications. We believe in this format and we're certain that this format will not only give you shorter return on investment periods, but will all overall deliver the delivery figures and the experience of clients. Therefore, thank you and looking forward to this hot week.